like to request Mr. Isha Dakumet Shahin Sir, Dean School of Arts and Culture, to deliver this welcome speech. Now, as I've been told to deliver my welcome speech, I'd like to do that short because we have so many things coming up. Such distinguished guests and so much for our students to know. So, welcome you all. Welcome all of you in the auditorium in this beautiful, mellow afternoon. Uh, you know, as you know, the Sabai heat is giving way to the uh, soft and splendid uh, autumnal breeze that is heralding the, uh, the coming of winter and then followed by spring. Now, late autumn is there. Now, herald is the key word today. The key word in the sense that we have some good news. The news is coming in. Because the University of South Asia just needed to have something of this song and magnitude of this, you know, there are so many kinds of education agencies and uh, who, who really you know, make a business out of it. But today we have people right from the embassy at the American Center who I should I should say we get it from the first mouth, right from the persons. Who are, um, who, who, are, who are the best people to tell us what they are, how they are going to help us out. And they have been kind enough, they have all just a short discussion with the Vice Chancellor's, Vice Chancellor's room. They have been telling us that, well, this is two way traffic. It's not that we are, uh, that you are only going to benefit it, but we are also going to benefit. That is what they were saying. So it's perfect. Spirit of equivalence and of, you know, uh, of mutual support and partnership. So I haven't said that much. I'd just like to uh, pronounce a few words, uh, say a couple of sentences on uh, University of South Asia. You've already seen the video, so I don't need to say more. But I'd like to say that, well, uh, our university is a different one. We might not have done uh, too much on, you know, grand yours and gorgeous buildings and this and that. The catchy and, you know, gimmick part of the private universities. But suddenly we have done something which we are proud of. We have been silently educating uh, the students of Bangladesh from all strata, all, every stratum of the society. And from, from all parts of the country, due to the fact that we offer education at a very affordable cost, in fact, incredibly affordable as compared to the other private universities. And that's where we stand out. And that is our pride, in fact. And that has been possible due to the, you know, the absolutely non profit attitude of our founding chairman. Uh, uh, Prof. Mateen and now his son, Prof. Mateen, who is um, and, and constant, he's a constant, constant of international repeal. They have the idea that, well, if somebody fails uh, to get, make it into the public university, let them get the education here. We don't care about profit. That is the great side that they have, I must say. So having said that, I'm just extending a little bit on that. Autumnal wind symbolism. Well, the autumnal wind, as I told you, heralds the coming of the best part of the year in our country or in this part of the world. Similarly, we they have someone, some people who are going to herald very great things to come here. So let me um, take my hats off in honor of Ms. Khadija Mahmoud, as the cultural actress of the American Center. And we have uh, Mr. Shahid, Education Exchange Program Manager, American Center. And also we have Mr. Mushfiq Hassan, 
education to this outreach for them and the center. And of course, we are immensely proud to have in our midst, midst our great leader, our vice chancellor, uh, Professor Dr. M. Wadu So I would like to prolong my speech because we have so many interesting and important things to know. And to the students, I would just like to say that we all years listen to what our resource persons say. And if you have any questions, you will have a session at the end of their delivery, their presentation. You will be able to ask questions. So at the end, my gratitude to all, uh, to, the, to those who have come in here today, because Corona has not yet uh, disappeared, it's still there. They have come, come here to listen to and to uh, be enlightened from the seminar, and at the same time, our very, very important guests, those very important personages sitting over here. So, uh, no more words, thanks and gratitude to all. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And now I would like to welcome our speaker, Ms. Khadija Mahmoud the Assistant Cultural Affairs Officer of the U.S. Embassy, Dhaka, to deliver her valuable speech and enlighten us about the topic of today's center. So, Assalamu alaikum, namaskar. Uh, it's so great to see everyone. Uh, I want to see you guys awake and energetic. So, Mushtaq Bhai and I and Hamyab and I will make sure that we get you guys engaged with us. This is gonna be a very interactive session. Um, I'm so excited and honored to be here today. This is the first time that I'm visiting the University of South Asia. It's truly an honor and a privilege. Uh, thank you so much to the student and the UC. Very nice to meet you. Uh, thank you so much to BC sir for being here, to the Dean for being here. Uh, we're so honored and so excited to meet and see all of you. Um, I know COVID-19 has made a lot of challenges for us, but uh, you know we are so grateful that the situation is getting better, and we wanted to really make sure that we have a chance to visit your university so that we can meet with you directly. Um, so as was mentioned earlier, my name is Khadija Mahmoud. I serve as the Assistant Cultural Affairs Officer at the U.S. Embassy in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Um, I'm so honored as this is my first diplomatic assignment, and I'm so honored that Bangladesh will always have a special place in my heart as the first country that I've been assigned for my overseas hosting. Um, I also you know, work with an amazing team of colleagues. Two of them are here with me today. Uh, Kanyapa is one of our uh, program exchange managers. So she's going to tell you so much about all these different opportunities for you to go to the United States and receive a fully funded scholarship to study at a US college university. And then Mushka Bai over there, he's also going to be telling you about so many opportunities for US higher education. So before we start our presentation, um, I just want to start off, and I know my colleagues know this about me, is I always like to start off by sharing a little bit about myself, because I want you to realize that it doesn't matter where you're from, it doesn't matter what your socioeconomic status is, it doesn't matter you know, what your family has been through. The beautiful thing about the United States is that anything is possible. It doesn't matter which part of the world you're from, like I said earlier, it doesn't matter how much money your parents have. If you want to work hard, if you want to study, if you want to give back to your country, and you want to do something good, I'm happy to share that the United States is welcome to receive you. You know, that is what we want to see. We want to see more Bangladeshi students, young professionals like you, who are the future policymakers, the future innovators, the future scientists, that are going to create the solutions that is going to push Bangladesh and the rest of the world into a new age. You all are incredibly talented, you are bright, you are smart, you are remarkable, and I hope that you will feel that the United States is a country that would welcome you and would receive you and provide you with an opportunity to develop yourself to pursue the career that you want to pursue. That being said, um, you know, I want to share a little bit about my story. So I'm a first generation American. What does that mean? That means that I'm the daughter of immigrants. Both of my parents are from Somalia. 
I met some Somali students earlier. So it was awesome because I got to speak in my mother's tongue for a very long time. Both my parents are immigrants from Somalia. As some of you know, in Somalia, you know, we've been facing many challenges. There was a civil war that broke out in 1991. Both of my parents immigrated to the United States before the civil war. And when my parents came to America, you know, that's where they met. That's where I didn't know I was born, my siblings were born. And when I was growing up, um, I always knew I wanted to go to college. I think in a lot of immigrant cultures, I think it's similar to Bangladesh, everybody wants you to go to school, right? They want you to do well academically, professionally, right? Your parents, your uncles, your aunties, your cousins, everybody's asking you, like, what are you going to do with your life? You know, what are you going to be? And I remember when I was growing up, I felt that pressure, right? I was like, what am I going to do? What am I going to study? And I remember uh, my dad, um, who I call Baba, right? My, my dad, you know, he was like, Khadija, you know, you, you're the oldest child, right? You know, we came to America with nothing. So if you want to go to college and university, I have no money to give you to go. And I told my dad, I said, don't worry about it. I'll figure it out, right? And I was very fortunate that I worked really hard in school and I received scholarships for both my bachelor's degree and my master's degree. So the reason why I say this is because you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. If I was able to do it, you can do it, okay? So today I want all of you to leave this room I want you to feel proud of yourself, and I want you to feel confident, and I want you to know that any of you can get into any school you want in the United States, okay? So that's the main goal that we want to share with you today. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Kadiapa, who's going to give a presentation on our youth exchange programs. Thank you. So good to see you uh, a large group uh, today because due to the pandemic, I'm the only thing I've heard that the world outreach for the party night. So so good to see you so many uh, young, bright faces today. So today I'm going to talk about the uh, student exchange program. After the kind of Dharma, so it's a student exchange program. Here both the program. Exchange cost of the so, exchange program is a program that we have undergraduate student opportunity to create in the United States, America, and culture. We have a undergraduate program to join the professional development. We have a cultural ambassador to present the department. We have a culture program to do one semester after the first semester. The program will be the eligibility criteria the key. You have to be a Bangladeshi citizen. You cannot be a dual citizen here. You have to hold a Bangladeshi passport. And you have to be 18 years or above uh, of your age. And then you should have completed your HSC or secondary education or above. Usually, I'm a first year ticket, third year student, the gay program, you say, maybe the final student, the student, the final student, because these are all non degree programs. I'm a Baka Bota, that's it. Thank you. So, and you have to be committed to fully participate in these programs, and you have to be proficient in English. Karanapra Jana, the American education, high, she put in the Jita high, English, high, she put English at the Bakota, Hakti Hawaii, and you have to be committed to return to the Bangladesh. We have two programs, an exchange program, a community college initiative program, and a global youth grant program. The community college program is a borrow and cultural program, a semester program, which is a particular subject. Those are very important subjects like public safety, hospitality management, business, agriculture. These, all those subjects are very important for our country. I'm sure some uh, public uh, safety and agency, public health is a uh, very important department in the University of South Asia. I'm sure uh, I would love to see some applications from the University of South Asia for uh, public safety for our community college initiative program. Then we have global new grad program. Global new grad program, the uh, semester program, you can subject after I apply for the Any subject I apply to 
for this particular program. Uh, community college initiative program I am not told that she can have community college initiative program I am ready to talk about community uh, college program will uh, teach you kind of a professional development it's like a, a professional development program certification program for something you know they are a professional training department or put it a charm as an internship for the department and that will also teach you how to do critical thinking critical writing how to have uh, exam preparation and things like that so a total journey to have to prepare for the uh, at a professional hishabe ebong kibhabe ekta bhalo student ke pere uthte hobe she shob shei bishoy gulo niye apnaderke janate tasra cross cultural interaction ache apnara international student theke meet korte parbe ebong apnader ekta cultural exchange shekhane hobe apnara ekhane dekhte pachhen amader ekjon student ke tar naam marsha she James Town Community College in Gatsi, I want to say, Porto Marishi, the Ruichi, who shaken Amanda, I want to say, and that's the Ruichan or the winner, he gets in his time, a Marsha Shuka Daka Kuritsi. So, what an honor for her. Community College Institute of the Bulo, which is complimented to it, the academic complement, academic complement, Dabra Pusay Batsen. The academic portion of which I will be interested in a portion of it. Community service related to connect community service learning and math. Come on, there are only two different types of department. Internship related to our side, which I mean to again pull up, and then cultural exchange program related to connect different different cultural exchange. Why? Because it's only for those who are only for the chapter situation to join for it. That's how that related to leadership development. Only for the activities of it, which will be math. Come on, there are leadership development for the department. And then, not for the least, action plan, where you will be able to get to do some project work. A book, she can have the action plan again, which is project to support for the market, Jaja area, the Jaja field, who will say, a book, who will be able to do the action plan for it, after that, she will go after the college and present for the market. If I have it, she will be able to do the action plan for it, and the Bangladeshi student show, our own exchange student will say, I'm the community college initiative. आर एक जो एक ने आप लोग देखते बच्चे ने एक बहुत अच्छा कमिटी कॉलेज इंटरेस्ट दिया है एक जो छात्रों के ये भी ये चीज़ लो को है कमिटी कॉलेज प्रोग्राम में ये वो शेख ने पार्टी से भी तो पोर्शन को ले आया था फिर बोर के भी वो रहते थे लेकिन इस बीच में भी देखो इंडिया को ऑर्गेनाइजेशन Graduate student, which have a second portion of the program, and you can take a second portion of the program. And that's how our students will go on to the international student to some impact. Plus, you can also be engaged with different community services. You can have a little bit of a different issue for us. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Are you listening to Pachcha Shobai? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, first, it's a privilege to be here uh, in front of all of you. I was so happy. They can shine star ke dekhe. Shine star, I am residency other student. Really? So it was very. I was very happy. Uh, it's my teacher, English teacher. So I'm using the best. I never knew. <laughs> so I'm Ashley Hassan, like I've already introduced. Um, I work for Education USA and the American Center in USA based in Dhaka. This is my eighth year as an advisor, and the best thing uh, about my job is that I get to work with uh, like all the amazing students like you, right? And be a part of your journey, your dream journey. That's what we say. Going to the dream country. So today, uh, Tanya for mentioned the exchange programs. Exchange programs are competitive and uh, limit with limited slots, right? But for Education USA, there are no slots. If you if you try, if you work hard, you can go. And that's why till last year we had eight thousand eight hundred thirty eight Bangladeshi students studying in the United States. And I want if there are like eighty students here, all eighty students added up to that number, right? So. Uh, Khadja is uh, my colleague, and why I always bring her with my presentation because she's the alibi of the U.S. higher education. She has done it herself. She speaks so highly about education in U.S.A. and it always helps when you are listening from someone uh, who has been there, who knew Bangladeshi student, who knew international student, and who have already seen the life of international student. So Khadja, why don't you start, and then I will get out. So can everyone hear me? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So um, you can tell Mushrikbai has enough energy. He doesn't need a microphone. He's very loud. <laughs> so we're actually going to start off by talking about um, sort of what Mushrikbai already introduced. So it's actually quite remarkable um, considering the size of Bangladesh, right? Um, Bangladesh is actually one of the top 20 sending countries of international students to in the United States. That's amazing. And actually, uh, during the 2019-2020 academic year, Bangladesh ranked 17 out of those 20 countries, right? And compared to other South Asian countries that were, um, you know, sending students to the United States, Bangladesh was actually the country with the largest percentage increase. So that's something that's really remarkable. So you can see from this slide. So every year, um, you may know, you may not know this because uh, this is a very U.S. government thing. But every year, um, we release a report. And this report basically shows all the countries that send international students to the United States. And that includes Bangladesh. So in the latest report that we have, uh, this is some of the information that we are happy to share with you. Um, as you can tell in this document, um, basically many of the people that go to the United States for their higher education from Bangladesh are people like you, who are going to the United States for either their master's degree, or their doctoral degree, meaning a PhD. So a lot of them are actually going there for their post-secondary education. Another thing too that you'll realize is that the number of students going to Bangladesh has continuously been like this. It's been going up and up and up and up. And that's what we want to see, okay? We want to see more Bangladesh students going to the United States. And so that's why we came here today, because we want to ensure that you all join that number uh, of students who actually go to the United States for higher education. And something that Mushri Pai said, which I think is really important, is that the beautiful thing about the U.S. system, especially when it comes to U.S. college universities, there are unlimited slots. There's no limit. Anybody from any country in the world can apply to study in America, right? And the United States, we have over 4,000 accredited institutions. What does accredited institution mean? What that means is that there are over 4,000 U.S. college universities that can issue you a degree of higher study in a range of subjects, right? Don't let Mushri Bhai distract you. He has, that's for later, don't get distracted. Uh, but that's part of the thing that we wanna share is that there's unlimited opportunities for you to study in America, okay? So everyone in this room, you can study in America. It's completely possible. There's no limit. So now the question comes up, and this is the question that we get, right? Every single time. Well, why should I study in the United States? 
What about all these other countries in the world? Why the United States? I mean, why not, right? Uh, the quality of education in the United States cannot be matched. You know, we have some of the top universities and colleges that are doing groundbreaking research, right? It doesn't matter what the subject is, whether it's molecular biology, whether it's anthropology, whether it's history, whatever the subject is, we have some of the top schools that produce research, right? Another thing too is that there's so much diversity in the academic disciplines. There's so many, like when I meet Bangladeshi students who are studying in America, there's some subjects that I never even heard of that they're studying, which is amazing. So the US system is one that the subjects are limitless and they're also just so interdisciplinary. So what do I mean by that? I mean, if you want to become a doctor, you can study music theory. You can study art. You're not limited to science. You can study anything. My friend is currently studying, uh, she's in medical school. I pray for her every day because she's so stressed. <laughs> she's in medical school. She, her major was religion. She majored in religion. So it doesn't matter, you know, what you study. It's so flexible. You can study multiple subjects, right? And then another thing too is that it's so flexible. Your US degree is based on you. What do you want to do? What do you want to study, right? And I know that a lot of you, when you go to the United States, you not only do you want to study, you want to gain professional experience, right? You want to have an internship. You want to add something to your CV. You can do that. There's so many resources for you. And then another thing too is tied to this is also networking opportunities, right? So for example, when you graduate from a US college university, you are part of their community. So it doesn't matter where you go in the world, you are automatically a part of that network. So for example, when I was coming to Bangladesh, I went to Georgetown University for my undergraduate degree. It's a, a private university in the Washington DC area. And when I was coming here, I reached out to my school. I reached out to Georgetown and I said, hey, can you connect me with alumni from Bangladesh, right? And they connect to me. Like there's so many, everywhere you go, you are part of their network. It doesn't matter what year you graduate, you are part of that network. And that network is gonna help you because when you meet somebody from your school, they're gonna ask you like, hey, you know, what are you doing? Are you looking for a job? Are you looking for an internship? Do you wanna work with me? That's connections, you need connections, right? That's how you move up in your career. So that's why, you know, going to the US is a really great asset. And then another thing too is that, you know, you, the U.S. system values international partnership. When I was at school, one of the best things that I got to experience was going to and meeting different international students. Some of my closest friends were students from all over the world. And that's a unique aspect of the U.S. system, is that we love having students from all over the world. And then another thing, too, is, you know, you get to do so many activities, right? I saw in the, in the presentation, some of you all were singing, right? Doing all these games, these different activities. You can do all those things in the United States too. So now it's the question of, okay, so you guys came here from the US Embassy, but then why are you using the word Education USA, right? So Education USA is, you know, a network of, you know, over so many centers, right? And we have advisors like Mushrik Bai, and their job, is to provide students like you with information about the US system. So our job is to be objective, it's to be you know, giving you as much accurate information as possible, current information, and then comprehensive information. So in Bangladesh, Education USA, we are under the US Embassy, right? And we have four centers. One of our centers is based in the embassy where Mushi Bai works, it's the American Center. We also have the Edward M. Kennedy Center. How many of you guys have heard of EMK Center? It's in Dhanbhumi. Have you ever heard of EMK? Okay, if you didn't hear about it, now I expect you to do research and visit the EMK Center, okay? So we also have the EMK Center here in Dhaka. We have two other centers. One is in uh, Chirong, Chattagram, and we have another one in Kolma, okay? So these four centers, what our advisors do is that we give you free information and advising support. I want to emphasize free information and advising support. We are the only official US government source. If somebody comes to you saying, hey, you want to go to America, pay me this much money, that is not Education USA. That is not a reliable source, right? So I'm going to quiz you guys now. Okay? I'm going to quiz everyone, okay? 
So what is Education USA? Can someone tell me? Anybody want to tell me what Education USA is? I just explained it quickly. Yeah, you'll get a prize if you answer. The question's not clear? Okay, what is Education USA? I just explained it. Does anyone know? Fantastic. Very good. Great job, sir. And one thing I want to emphasize is that Education USA is the only official U.S. government source on U.S. higher education, okay? So if anybody else comes to you, if they are not Education USA, they are not an official source, okay? Is that clear? Everyone knows? I'm going to quiz you later. So that's why I'm giving you another chance. You guys got it? Okay, great. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, um, I'm not only Kundu Kataboja after the ticket to the Kihapa department at Chekane, Achke CSE. How many are from CSE? Wow, I'm sure you already know, right? You are the only scholarship and financial aid available at CSE and related to all the STEM subjects. Aren't you feel that? Next step. Textile, another amazing. How many students from textile department? Great. Very good. BBA? Honest student. Uh, business and honest opportunities, masters in finance, accounting, entrepreneurship is a very new subject which is doing really good in Bangladesh and the USA and then MBA. What else? English? Yes. All right. Few. Okay. Okay. English is very good subject. Go ahead. All right. What else? Yes. 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 You have so many subjects to represent, right? So many departments. And same goes for United States, that you go and you can choose anything and everything to study, right? It doesn't matter what background you're going from, you can study anything. Nobody's going to say, no, you cannot say that, right? So, but I'm not going to help you. What is happening in the U.S.A.? The most important thing is that you have to take a look at it. Because it's a very important thing. Osho Shatuna Hulu, Shomo Shatu Vepar, Tita Dia, Amade Shawaiki, Jeta Vajara, and I go. So, Aged Akan, Amra Kinama Sarkis, after the British Hajju Buritaki, right? Jeta Kaja Poloje, Amra, free services be happy. A Amra Shapo taking the other day, free, free, Tanya Pau Jeta Bolegalo, Shopchi Potem Kota into shop exchange program free. Amra Jeta Bolte Education in USA, shop services free. If you have an idea that you can do free English money, you can do it. We bring the quality product here, authorized by US and this. So, if you go to your Facebook, if you go to your Facebook tonight, later in the evening, and search Education in Bangladesh, just Education is a single word, and then Bangladesh. I mean, you can do it, you can do it. In our Facebook page, in the event section, you will go and you will see that what sort of, what amazing uh, sessions we host. We are hosting university session, alumni session, on uh, test, uh, test uh, uh, workshops, and then uh, on a basic group advising for universities, so all sort of sessions are there. So uh, we do free webinars, workshops, our American center is very important to us. Our center is very important to us. You can go and become a member. Our membership fee is 800 taka for two years. So it's just giving you the ownership. So that you feel like, okay, this is my place. It's something like that, right? So you can go and you use our resources. Our shop updated books are shared, scholarship is required, university is required, shop test books are required, our resources are required. And then, I'm going to advise you, I'm going to give you a mock test, 
and then after a shop station, you will have to do a bar with which is free. It will show the other day for me. I like a cook borrow step at a data visa. What are you on the school? They have put a gift to have it. I'm not to public affairs section, I mean the center, uh, Rasta Mutu Tiki building it, our consular section, data data visa to interview my day inside it. So I'm not a police student, a general visa near the Jorotan attack, full information, not a game, coin a part. It will never get a Korea, we section ticket. Visa officer there, I'm going to get a Why don't you speak to students so that they are not scared of this process? They understand that it's just a conversation between two people, between the student and between the consular section, right? And that you're going to tell them the story of your study or what you're planning. Why do you go to that? Why are you going to this institution? So, this is it, all right? So, all these services. Now, this is the five steps model that uh, we we follow in all our centers, like we have 400 plus centers in more than 170 countries and we all try to follow this uniform model because we want our students to feel that they all are treated in the same way, right? So first is research your option. You all are sitting here, you're already part of the research because you, will, you are learning about education USA, you are learning about how to approach the uh, United States higher study and everything. But uh, your success in the US application system will depend on this research. How closely you are doing research and how you are engaging yourself and for what to make. Joto after research program, they can take O University of Poisha Bishitiche, O University after field of study, O University after Kubi Pochum, the professor at the Jashas of the Kachukutan, a short information with the Barbary Ashbe when we do our research program. And we're going to help you to navigate through that process, right? Next is finance your study. Obviously, US and Portugal, you know, finance is a big step. Our US study, we all know US study is expensive. However, there are ways to get your expenses down. slide, student 60% of masters and PhD students, almost 5,000 rupees. And then, student students funding scholarship Full funding now, partial, very good amount of partial funding. I will show you application. Education USA will try to help with, with keeping our capability, right? And we have a lost film. Oh my god, this is so stressful. Oh my god, this is so difficult. That's where we want to come and help you. All right. Next slide. Okay. So I'm gonna ask you the KKK student. I'm gonna call them Kiki requirement. Can you go back to the last slide? Thank you. They can have a photo to some for the idea to US application. Kiki lack the party, US application and journal. Yes. IELTS. IELTS, yes. Very good. What else? Very good. Recommendation letter, motivation letter. Vision and mission. What else? GRU. GRU. Excellent. Amazing. Statement of purpose. All the great trip lines. That's why I know that they're new. What else? Aki Lage. <laughs> exactly. Money talks, right? RT. RT like At the CDA word as a start for the Jibo Pam for the CGPA, right? So, all these things. Amazing. So, look, you have covered most of the points. So, you already know it. It's just about planning now. Can you help me to give these notebooks to the students who gave the answers? Thank you so much. Can we have a clap for those students who have asked? All right. So, thank you.
দেখেন আপনারা অলরেডি কিন্তু বেশিরভাগ রিকোয়ারমেন্ট গুলো অলরেডি আপনারা সো ফার্স্ট পয়েন্ট ইজ when you need to apply so you need to start planning right the, the basic sessions ekhane us students of the beginning are like fall and spring fall is the starting of the academic year hence the acceptance rate for international students are the highest in fall session ebong financial aid ability financial aid availability ta sobcheye beshi thake scholarship availability right so sob shomoy target korte hobe amader fall apply ফলের ক্লাস স্টার্ট হয় অগাস্ট থেকে সেপ্টেম্বর এর মধ্যে সো অ্যাপ্লিকেশনটা স্টার্ট হয়ে যাবে আগের বছরের নভেম্বর লাস্ট বা ডিসেম্বর থেকে সো ফর एग्जांपल এজ এ মাস্টার অফ পিএসসি স্টুডেন্ট আপনি যদি চান যে আই ওয়ান্ট টু अप्लाई ফর ফল 2023 ইউর ফল 2022 ইউর অ্যাপ্লিকেশন ডেডলাইন যেটা আপনার ক্লাস শুরু হবে নেক্সট অগাস্ট সেপ্টেম্বরে এই বছর থেকে কিন্তু আপনার অ্যাপ্লিকেশনের ডেডলাইন স্টার্ট হয়ে যাবে তার মানে তার আগে আপনাকে যা যা দরকার সব আপনি কিন্তু চিয়ে নিতে হবে কারণ আপনি যদি ফল মিস করেন আপনি স্প্রিং এরও আপনি अप्लाई করতে পারেন এখানে আরেকটা জিনিস বলে রাখি ধরেন আপনাদের কয়টা সেমিস্টার ব্যাচেলর্স এর 12 12 সো ট্রাই সেমিস্টার রাইট প্রত্যেক বছর আপনাদের তিনটা করে ধরেন আপনার 10 11 টা সেমিস্টার শুরু হয়ে গেছে শেষ হয়ে গেছে এন্ড ইউ ডোন্ট ওয়ান্ট টু মিস দা ফল ইউ স্টিল ক্যান अप्लाई উইথ হ্যাভিং ওয়ান সেমিস্টার টু গো রাইট আফটার প্রেডিকশন স্কোর দিয়ে ট্রান্সক্রিপ্ট দিয়ে আপনি কিন্তু अप्लाई করে ফেলতে পারেন বাট ইফ ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু কমপ্লিট ইট nicely and then start applying that's perfectly all right here so jeta holo je apnake dekhte hobe je fall jodi miss hoye jay spring ache spring january february theke shuru hoy spring er application din the time holo june july august oi time thik ache next point is academic transcript jeta bolechilam cgpa we need to remember different institution in the have different requirements we cannot assume that all the institution uh, follow a same kind of document where all the deadlines all the application requirements are written it doesn't work like that all right so dhoron apnar pashta university apply korben oi pashta university tin ta city kiya hoye chache four er modhe 3.2.8 4.3.5 so depending on your city kiya you should target your institution right where did it come from again that research next is language proficiency test amra shobai ekta word shuni standardized test তাই না আমরা শুনি না standardized test there are two kinds of standardized test একটা হলো language proficiency test যেটা হলো আমার TOEFL IELTS Duolingo PTE আর একটা হলো aptitude test এটা হলো SAT ACT for undergrad students আপনাদের জন্য one of the students say GRE GRE or GMAT right so language proficiency test কিন্তু mandatory আমাদের native language না কি english so we we'll have to prove to that institution that amader ekta minimum survival er jonno je english score ta dorkar seta amader ache amra bolte parbo likhte parbo shunte parbo ebong porte parbo very good so ei chapter section sob exam er test kintu eki ei chapter section apnar ekta minimum dokkhota test korbe er pore holo eta holo mandatory gre gme is uh, optional but if you are looking for scholarship and if you are at like second year or third year i would strongly encourage to start doing the gre amader main academic porashonar pashe jodi amader saptahik tin theke char ghonta time thake spend that for gre gre er byapar ta ki gre jodi amra age theke diye dili gre scores validity 5 bochor thake so amra jodi third year eo dei amar kintu kono khoti nai and when you appear for gre tofel or ielts become really easy because you've already done that difficult one then i'll just do it is not that difficult all right so uh, for business background student is usually gmat for non commerce background student is usually gre however there are many schools in the united, united states for teaching a business they still accept gre so it, again the more research you do the more you learn about these things all right uh, i'll just do fill er ekhane kintu minimum ekta score ache tai na সেই মিনিমাম স্কোরটা কিন্তু আবার ডিপেন্ড করবে আপনি কোন স্কুলে যাচ্ছেন তাই না আমরা একটা খুব মজার খেলা আজকে খেললাম না কারণ টাইম চলে যাচ্ছে যে কত স্কোর সবাই বলে 6 6.5 বাট ইউজুয়ালি ইট ডিপেন্ডস অন দা স্কুলস ইউ আর अप्लाइंग তাই না কিন্তু জিআরএ কি ম্যাটার ক্ষেত্রে কিন্তু মিনিমাম স্কোর নাই ইট ডিপেন্ডস অন ইওর অ্যাপ্লিকেশন ফর एग्जांपल সে ইউ এক্সপেক্টেড টু ডু আই এক্সপেক্টেড টু গেট 3.5 ইন ইওর ব্যাচেলর However, for you, for some reason, you got 3.2. Now you really, really want to compensate that 0.3 CGPA loss. Then what you can do, you can work hard for GRE, get some good score, and your GRE score can compensate your that 0.3 loss. 
that's how Jiri can uh, give you a boost up in your application package, right? All right. Next is admission essay. Uh, all many students say SOP, admission essay, motivation letter, they're almost same, right? And if you have to remember it's one of the most, most important point, most of the important uh, section for your application. Statement of purpose, SOP. Like the name says itself, they cannot know these things looking at your academic result or your GRE result. You have to tell them that, look, I'm particularly interested in this research field, or I have this passion to study this subject. There are no ways to tell them by your scores. Only this SOP can help you to let them know it, right? And trust me, admission people are eager to know that why from these thousands of miles distance how brave you are to come to this part of the world and study here they want to they want to know your story they want to know your interest and that's why sop is so important all right Asha, letter of recommendation going back to your teachers teachers it's one of the main reasons right besides all other reasons because uh, overnight, the teacher That teacher has to know you well. That teacher has to know your journey, know your struggle, know your strength, know your weakness. And then he or she will be able to give you a good recommendation letter, which can be effective for your application purpose. Extracurricular activities is actually important for undergrad student, for master student, it's more professional, right? And last but not least, money we talked about, so financial matter, but the good thing about uh, graduate application is that you don't have to send any uh, bank statement ahead. You apply, they will see your scores, they will see your SOP, letter of recommendation, and then they will offer you the best offer they can give you. And it's up to you whether uh, you, you accept that offer or not. There is no pushing, there is no binding, right? So, Jodi Apnagona and Amar Bajaja Shatta match coach, I'm eating you otherwise. You should always speak up. Jodi Apnagona Korean, Jamar, I pick up a daughter, please pick up. I'm looking for a Jamina Japan daughter. You can say that, look, another 5,000 will really ensure my admission to your school. And they might give you that extra 5k or 10k. But you have to tell them, you have to let them know that that much is. Uh, bothering you, right? Bothering your parent. So these are the eight um, requirements uh, you usually need to know when you're applying to the United States. Uh, uh, by the way, thank you so much for helping us with all the slides. Thank you so much. So uh, these are, uh, we get thousands of advices throughout the years, right? We talk to the students in different steps and we try to help them. These are few of the schools where our students went starting from Harvard to community college, uh, public state, public university, state university, private university, all are there. And that's the essence and that's the beauty of US higher education that you can choose anything which is up to your uh, choice, up to your priorities, matched with your priorities, right? You shouldn't limit yourself only to look for uh, Ivy Leagues, only the big ones, only the ranked ones. The beauty of US institutions that you can still go to an institution which none have heard, you still can go there and come up with a beautiful, qualityful education. That's the beauty of US higher education. And that's why thousands and millions of students from all over the world choose US as their study destination. Uh, next slide. So I talked earlier about what sort of sessions we did do. So this is just an example of our October programs. We are already stepped into November and we are finalizing it for number two. Uh, this was a session by Rice University, Boy State University. Then uh, there was a Bangladesh student association from Fargo University. And uh, we had a physics program from Ohio State University, ILTS Tips and Strategy. This month we have GMAT and then basic group advising session research. As you can see, we are doing all sorts of sessions to help you so that you, you, you don't feel alone in this journey. So these are our, uh, uh, these are our contact details, Amashvik Hassan, 
my email address is given here. So if you want to set up a one to one appointment, you just write me an email. This is my email address. Uh, this is my phone number. I would like to have a uh, discussion with you and I'll be happy to talk for you guys. And this is our Facebook page, email address, everything is there. Uh, I need to change the font color of the education of the email. But the card you have, the email address is there. Shall I page and card? All right. So we still have some gifts items. Who can tell us the age requirements we just talked about? But also we need more female uh, students. No, 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 no. So we talked about age requirements. This question is only for the female ones, right? So female students, please, after their uh, exclusive, after their volunteer, after their I to discount the email. Anyone remember? It a camera just like the cover You remember? You want to go back? Niles? 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 I am Tati Lagan. GRE. I am Tati Lagan. I am Tati Lagan. Very good. Thank you so much. Good job. All right. Tanya has talked about exchange programs, right? Apa, you want to ask some questions? Uh, sure. So. I talked about two programs. I hope you remember the names. So who can tell me uh, the length of the programs? One program that called the borrow. I mean, which program is called the borrow? Which program is called the borrow? Which program is called the borrow? The program is called the program is called the Global Libra. All right, you've got a gift already, so this is for you. Thank you. Okay, so we, we initially said that Bangladesh is part of the top 20 sending countries of international students in the United States. Does anyone remember the number? Very good. <laughs> All right, so I kept telling you the number of Bangladeshi students who went to study in United States. Yeah. Very good. 883. Very good. All right, so uh, and the question Does anybody remember which institution Khadijapa went to? She mentioned the name. Very good. Now you can have <laughs> All right, last question. How many education U.S. centers we have in Bangladesh and where? Four, four, four. Can you remember what, what are the places? Hmm? Amazing. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Can we just? <laughs> so, uh, with your permission, we'd like to do a picture here where Kaja and Tanya can go and stand, and I can. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, we basically finished our uh, presentations. So, what we want to do is actually, Mr. how about before we do the photo? Uh, we want to, I know that we we'll said, yeah, exactly. So I know we, we said a lot of things to you all. We gave you a lot of information. Uh, but if you have any questions, uh, we'll try our best to answer some of them now. So if you have a question, please raise your hand. Any questions? After the Judy Kono Kichuni Kono, yes, sir. Yes. Register of this university, so I'm not a student, but all these students are my students. My son, daughter, they are also students. 
That's why I am interested to ask you a question. My conception was so much that immigration or study in USA is the most critical one in comparison to many other countries. In comparison to many other countries. As you have uh, uh, described here, as you have uh, given descriptions, that uh, now it seems it's very easy and no plenty. Uh, uh, I think more communication between you and the uh, Bangladeshi community should be there. So that people may learn more about the opportunities, faculties uh, of studying in your country. Uh, how can we, how can we, uh, how can we extend ourselves to approach for such study, for such availing such opportunities? I mean, how can we? Approach further yes. to you to know more about all these uh, evidence. Yeah. That's my question. Thank you. So thank you so much for your question. So thank you so much for your question. Um, I think well, the first step is that's why we came, right? That's the reason why we came to your university is because we want to give you direct access to us. I think one of the most unique things about the U.S. Embassy is that we want to be in community with you. We want to visit you. We want to engage with you. And we want you to know that you can directly interact with any of us. Our job is to be a resource for you. That's our job, right? Our job is not to just sit in the office. Our job is to go outside, right? And I think the most important thing that you said is that, you know, it makes me sad when I heard, when we first started talking, you said that, you know, the process is seen as difficult. Right? I would disagree with that because it's actually not a difficult process. The problem is that people think it's a difficult process, but it's not. And the problem is that if you don't have knowledge, you don't know, right? Um, you know, in Somali, we have a saying, right? right? If you don't have knowledge, you don't have light, right? You need knowledge to have light, right? So that's what we are trying to do. We're trying to spread information. But the thing about the U.S. system is that it's a unique system because the U.S. system is one where you have to put yourself there. Nobody's going to come to you. You have to do the work. You have to do the research. It's not going to come to you. And I know a lot of students, they're always looking for a shortcut, right? But the U.S. system is not a shortcut system, my friend. You know what I'm saying? you got to work hard. you got to do your research. And that's why we're here. You don't have to do it by yourself. So everybody, we told you today, there's four centers, right? Your homework is after today, send us an email, follow us on Facebook, schedule an appointment. Are you a member of the American Center? Become a member of the American Center. Our job is to help you, but you have to take the step. You see, we can meet you halfway, but you have to take the step too, right? And in terms of the, the visa process, right? It is a process that is not difficult. But unfortunately, people are scared and people are confused and they don't know what to do. Our job is that we we will talk we will talk to our colleagues who work in that section every single day. We, we tell them how can we make it easier for people? How can we make it easier for students? Right on the Facebook page, we do so many Facebook lives, so many Facebook lives just on the F1 visa, which is the student visa, right? So we have all this information. But we need your help. So today, all of you who are here, you heard from us, right? Right? You were listening, right? Yeah. You know some information, right? So what are you going to do? You're going to go home and you're going to share this information. Okay? You're going to send an email. You're going to follow us on Facebook. You're going to become a member of our centers, okay? And you're going to stay connected with us. Because if you stay connected with us, we promise you we are going to help you every step of the way, okay? Is that helpful? Okay, great. Thank you.
the question any publication or research work can help me to go for finding my preferable subject is any of uh, of course, I mean, having a research paper or publication, it's an added to your whole application. However, uh, for masters, it's not a mandatory thing, right? For PhD, it is. So uh, it depends what you want to study. For example, say you're planning, since you've already done research and publication, I would say to work a bit more in that area, and then straight you can apply for PhD. For PhD, you need to start communicating with your professors. So that's the that's the difference between masters and PhD. For masters, not necessarily you need to talk to your professor ahead, but for PhD, and if you have publication research, you must try to get some research assistantship from the professor. So if you go to the website and you go to the faculty list, you will see that what professors are working in which area, and then you can start communicating with them like from two to three months ahead because they're gonna allocate those funds to different students. So you need, you need to give them a heads up that I'm working on that and a brief email where you write about your academics, about your research work, about what standardized tests you have given, or if you haven't given, when you're planning to give it. Tell them that I'm, I'm, I'm planning to see in my GRE life in uh, September, ILTS October. Give, give your uh, planning to the professor so that he or she has an idea that what you're going to do. So obviously to answer, your uh, research and publication is really helpful for your application. Uh, yes, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm working as an assistant professor in the school of business. So there are some students who are about to graduate their uh, full program. So I would like to know something about the full drive scholarships. Oh, uh, actually, yeah. uh, that, that will aid, aid some students yes. uh, for the master's program. And also, uh, with the faculties also, I would very much uh, eager to know something else. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for adding the last part because I was going to say that it's not only for students. Uh, Fulbright program is also, also very much applicable for uh, all of you who are teachers and at your early uh, professional level, right? So the Fulbright, uh, Fulbright is a program uh, which is the, like, the most prestigious in your study, uh, uh, study system because we have a lot of exchange programs starting from which and Tanya Pate, from ES to CCI to Global UGRAD and then comes Fulbright. So Fulbright, uh, among all those exchange programs, I believe Fulbright is the only one who provides a degree, full-fledged degree. So uh, uh, Fulbright, is, uh, again, is competitive. It is for early level professionals. What we do every year, we, uh, we have like 10 to 12 field of study where we think that this year, this would be our selective area. And if, you're, if it matches with your area, you will like, maybe social studies there in this year. So if you have studied from social area and you have some relevant job experience, like two to three years, you can apply for that full drive program. And if you selected, US Department of State will uh, take care of all of your costing, standardized days, this and that, and they will select an institution for you where you can go and do your master's program and come back. So that's that's the full drive program. Did I use it? Yeah, the only thing I would say, so one of the things that I want to say too, is that even if you are a teacher, right, you're a junior faculty, Fulbright is one way that you can get a master's degree, especially in business, English, whatever subject, right? But even apart from Fulbright, because Fulbright, there's a limited number of slots, right? It's very competitive, right? Um, even outside of Fulbright, you can just regularly apply to the United States for your higher education. There's so many junior faculty at different universities that end up going to the US for their PhD or a second master's degree, and they get funding from the school. So I would say definitely, you know, apply for Fulbright. You, you know, next year we're gonna start the process for the application again. Visit the, the, web, the embassy website, but the best place is follow our Facebook page, okay? It's at bangladesh.usembassy. Everybody right now, if you don't follow the Facebook page, before you leave this room, follow our Facebook page because that's where, that's where you'll get all the information. When is Fulbright announced? You'll see on your Facebook page, right? When is the process open? And also, you know, for us, for Education USA, if there's a group of faculty from this university, let's say there's five or ten faculty who want to go to the U.S. for a PhD, we can create a cohort. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, we do. So one of the things that we do is we do cohort advising. So maybe a couple of months. 
the five step model that Mushi Bai said, we will walk you through the process as a group. And you guys can support each other. So yeah, if there's a group of junior faculty, if you want to do it, we want, you know, we want to help. Just reach out to us and then we can work together. Good luck. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have one question that is if already I have a quarantine. Yes. We did have any advantage in the case of foreign scholarships. Is it determined by the uh, particular university where I'm applying or is that happening? So, uh, if you don't mind me asking, where did you go? Uh, I, um, I don't have much to give you. Oh, wow. Amazing. Okay. So, one thing I'll say is the United States, uh, they love. You, especially if you've already done research or a certain level of graduate education, they love to see that you, you're somebody who is eager about you know developing yourself. So actually, it all depends on how you present yourself. So the one thing I'll say is that the U.S. application, it's it's your application. It's not Mr. Bai's application. It's not my application. It's your application. So when you write your statement of purpose, even if you want to do second master's, third master's, you want to do PhD. It's all about the way that you tell your story. Every U.S. college university, I'll give you, this is the easiest advice, and I think the most important advice is do your research, and when you are applying to the school, tell the school. Don't have them guess. Don't have them guess. Tell them how you are going to be a value added, okay? When I was applying, okay, for my master's, I made sure in my statement of purpose, I remember the, the, the person who said statement of purpose, when I was applying, in my statement of purpose, I told them very clearly, I am someone who has X experience, I've done X things, I will, I will add to the classroom, right? Because in the U.S. system, I don't know if you guys know, but in the U.S. college environment, when you are in class, your professor is going to ask you for your opinion. Your professor is going to say, hey, you're from Bangladesh. What's the situation in Bangladesh? You study business, right? Your, your U.S. professor is going to say, hey, today I'm not going to talk. Today I'm going to give the microphone to you. You come. It's an auditorium, maybe 200 people. You tell them what is the business scenario in both Right? No, no, I'm, not, no, I'm just being, I'm being realistic, right? And I think, I know it's terrifying, but that's the beauty of the U.S. system. The U.S. system, everybody's a teacher, right? I know, I know my, my parents are from a country where, like, you know, the teacher is, like, <laughs> you know, and no, everybody's quiet, and your teacher comes and you have to stand up. America's not like that. Your professor's going to wear shorts. Some of your professors, they might have food on their clothes. You know what I'm saying? But it's a very informal, open system. It's dialogue, you see? Especially when you do your master's or your PhD, your professor's going to ask you for help, right? Your professor's going to say, hey, I'm writing a research paper about business in South Asia, but I know nothing about that. Can you help me? Right? So when you apply, you can mention you went to the UK for your education, but explain why you are applying to that school. Explain what benefit your experience is going to bring to the school. Does that make sense? Uh, and this is something I'll play. I'll trust this one by one. Okay. Uh, while I was in abroad in UK, I said that they do student exchange program not only for the study purpose, they also done for like cultural exchange. Exactly, yes. Does this one also? Absolutely. So I think. Uh, Tanya Apa can explain that more, but one of the beautiful things of when you do an exchange program, whether it's academic or professional, the most important thing is that you are going to be an ambassador of Bangladesh. You're, you know, you're going to come, your school's going to have a, a program, right? And they're going to say, okay, so tell me something about Bangladesh, right? You're going to explain your culture. You're going to, you know, maybe some of you may be cooking, who knows? Maybe you're going to make them kichuri, maybe you're going to make them, you know, whatever dish you're going to make them, right? And then you're going to say, you know, I'm in Bangladesh, okay, right? This is my country, this is my culture, right? And then you're also going to have a chance to learn about their culture. You know, one thing that I always say is that when I uh, when I was in school, I was so shocked because I, I had to say that I think the Bangladeshi community in the United States, they're a very strong group. Because any U.S. college university, it doesn't matter if you go to Wisconsin, Minnesota, any school, maybe a school you've never heard of, I promise you, if there's one Bangladeshi, they open the Bangladesh Student Association, right? <laughs> Maybe that person is the president, the director, the finance. Every job is one person. But I promise you, when they have the flag, you'll always see a Bangladeshi flag. 
every U.S. college university, you'll always see green and red. And that's a beautiful thing because I notice Bangladeshis are so proud of who they are. So an exchange program, you get to represent your country. You're the ambassador, right? So it's a beautiful thing. And it doesn't matter what program you do, you are the face of Bangladesh. And for a lot of people, I'm going to be honest with you, they're going to be like, where is Bangladesh? I never heard of Bangladesh. You know, and you're going to say, let me tell you, right? <laughs> My country is an amazing country, right? We are the ones who saved the mother language for everybody, right? We should be proud of that, right? We should be proud of that. So that's something that you can share with Ryan. Thank you. see their website what's the general requirement right because you're changing your field of study but again uh, do not let it stop or uh, make you scared of this whole process you need to remember there is not much difference in GRG at end of the day they are just a standardized test right so whatever school asks you you can give it a shot however usually standardized tests are given from the experience you have already had so if you have studied business so far, you can always sit for GMAT. But GRE is a safer option because GRE is accepted by both commerce and non-commerce subjects. So, but again, it's always good to approach the school. They might even web you GRE or GMAT, you don't know. So talk to the admission officer. They are very welcoming, very friendly. Their job is to talk to students. And when they see that it's an international student, they're even more helpful. So please talk to them, communicate with them and get the help from them. Thank you so much. And just, sorry, one thing to add to your question, you, you raised a really um, important point, right? The beautiful thing about the US system is that you can study anything, and it doesn't matter what your previous background was. It's, you, you can literally study any field, you can switch anytime, right? When I was like, I, I'll tell you, like everybody, we used to call it like flip-flop, right? Like you're just constantly changing your mind about what you want to do, right? So if you studied one subject, but you want to study another subject, that's perfectly fine. And actually, what Mushkabai was saying, the one thing I would add is the first step is do your research. But when you do your research, you can do it with us. So for example, you can have a meeting with Mushkabai or somebody like me, and you can say, hi, you know, these are the things that I want to study. What's available, right? And then, you know, kind of like when you go to a market, right? Like there's so many different things you can see, right? Our job is to say, okay, so you like this subject, um, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? You do research, 
you spend more time looking at the school, the program. And especially if you want to do a graduate, like postgraduate <coughs> program, usually the schools, they actually would love to talk to you, like Mushkifai said. They would love to interact with you. Especially when you say, hey, I'm a student from Bangladesh, they're going to be like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like a student who's from you know, South Asia wants to meet with me. The professor is going to get so excited, right? So definitely, you know, do your research, but you can also do your research with us. We can help. Okay? Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. So I think we're going to take a photo, if that's okay, with everyone. Thank you so much.